video as far as to show that they are the same mind and the same entity, but they're, they're, they're different. Okay, they're not the same. All right, give me on Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30. Because we already established that the wisdom, wisdom is Christ. Okay. Proverbs 8 and 30. Right, so now when we read wisdom, we get to understand that the wisdom manifested itself in the form of Christ on earth in flesh. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30. Proverbs 8 and 30. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Right, so now read that. So when you get that, read that again one more time. All right. Then I was by him. It said wisdom was by the father. Read. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Now, get the understanding. It says, then I was by him. This is wisdom, right? As one brought up with him. Right? Hold that. Or drop Proverbs. They could remember that. Give me St. John chapter 17, verse 1. St. John 17 and 1. Right, because it said, and, and wisdom was by him. We're going to keep reiterating that. It says, wisdom, wisdom was by him, wisdom was with him. Read St. John 17 and 1. These words speak Yahweh. These words spake Jesus, Yahweh. Read. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So obviously, how can how can the son be the father if the son is praying to the father? <laughs> obviously, the son was on the earth suffering and the flesh, and the father was up in the heavens in the spirit. All right. So that shows you the distinction between Jesus and God. I all guess right. Jesus was praying to himself. Right. That's not that's not what he was doing. All right. Read on. All right. Verse two. Right, drop down to verse 5. Verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thy me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Uh-oh. <laughs> Christ said that I was with you and glorified with you before the world was. But wait a minute. Didn't it say in the book of Proverbs? Hold on. Give me Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30 again. Proverbs 8 and 30. Then I was by him. Hmm. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. See that? And so I, now we get the understanding that that wisdom was talking about Christ. That's the understanding. The wisdom is talking about Christ. The word of God is referring to Christ. Christ is the word of God. You understand? That was with him. Now go back to St. John chapter 1 verse 1. And the beginning was the word. Right. The beginning was the word. The word is wisdom. Wisdom is Christ. The son. Read. And the word was with God. Read. And the word was God. So now we get to understanding that the word represents wisdom. Wisdom manifested itself in a form of life and flesh for humans with Christ. Christ, which was there, an angelic force. He was a power, a spirit. That's right. All right. With the father before the world was created because man wasn't created yet. So how can Christ be there with the father if Christ was just a man? Okay. Right. So Christ was an angelic being at the time of the creation. He had the most side giving him the orders and the blueprints right. to create the Mother Earth. The sun, right. The moon, the stars, as well as the beasts, creatures. When you read St. John's, when you read St. John's the first chapter, it explains it. John goes into it. Read the whole chapter. You can do that on your own. We're not gonna do that now. Because I just want to deal with chapter one, verse one. But y'all could read the whole chapter of St. John's the first chapter. All right, if you have any questions on it, you can email us and we'll give you the understanding of it. But it's self-explanatory once you get the understanding of this video that we're doing right here. All right, it will go into the relationship between God and Christ as far as the world creation, before the world was created. Okay, Satan was messing with my throat earlier, now he's trying to mess with my nose. Okay, so read St. John chapter 1 verse 1 again. All right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So now we get the understanding of in the beginning was atomic creation. Okay, and it said that the word, the word, what was the word? We understand that in the beginning of the time of creation was the word. The word represents wisdom. Wisdom manifested itself in the form of Christ. Wisdom was there before the world began in the time of creation, which we understand that that's speaking of Christ being there. John and the disciples already explained that. That's talking about Christ and the angelic force. Now it said the word was with God because we understand Christ Himself brought out that He was with the Father before the world was even created. Wisdom in Proverbs 8 chapter says, I was with the Father before the world was created. So there's a there's a correlation between wisdom and Christ. And, and wisdom was manifested in flesh, which is the word and flesh with the time of Christ. You get the understanding of that when you read St. John's the first chapter. Now here's the problem. What does it mean when it said the word was God? 
Okay? Read it again one more time from the top. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When it said the Word was God, meaning what? Christ is superior over all flesh on this earth. Okay? Because that's what God is. God is a supreme being that has power over all flesh on this earth. He's become like a divine entity over all flesh on this earth. All right? Let's prove that. Give me Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Paul went into it briefly. Okay? Give me the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Romans. Chapter 9, verse 5. Read. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Right, because Christ didn't come for all nations. Christ came for the nation of Israel, okay? Concerning the flesh, out of all flesh on this earth, Christ came for the nation of Israel. That's why I said, whose are the fathers, concerning who the promises were made for. It was the promises were made to who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which were the father and progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. And it says, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. Because all flesh represents all nations, animals, dogs, animals of all sorts and types. But there was one specific flesh Christ came for, and that was for the nation of Israel. Read. Who is over all. Right. So Christ said he's over all flesh. Who was over all. So that's how Christ is considered to be a God because he's above all flesh on this earth. All right, so therefore, if he's above all flesh on this earth, then that means in a supreme, angelic, divine being, he will be the God of all flesh on this earth. But that is not saying he's the Father, okay? In the spiritual aspect of Christ, Christ is a divine, angelic being that is overpowered and supersedes the authority of all flesh on this earth, therefore making him a God. That's what it means when it said the Word was God, showing you that the word was not just manifested in the flesh as a mortal man, but the spirit of that word of wisdom is a God. Okay, that was with the, the true and living God, the Father, during the time of creation, before the world was even created. That's the understanding. Read Romans chapter 9, verse 5 again. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. Who is over all. According to the scripture, Christ is over all. Read. God bless forever. Amen. But yet... Christ is not the God, right. but he is above all flesh. Because Paul made the distinction between Christ and God right here in Romans 9. And he's a judge and a ruler over right. all flesh. That's what the word God means. Right. He's God also God. means judge or ruler. Ruler. Exactly. That's another that's another way of saying judge and, or ruler. And just like we read in Revelation 19 chapter, it tells you on how when he comes back to make a second return, he's going to rule over the, uh, the other nations. Right. Rule over the other nations. With a rod of iron. Beautiful. Showing to you that Christ is the ultimate judger, ruler, or God. Beautiful. Over all flesh. Right. Remember during the time of um the uh, of the plagues in Egypt, it said the Lord had brought down judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. Yeah. That's not talking about like um other gods in existence in right. Egypt. No, that's talking about all their judges and rulers. Yeah. Pharaoh and all his 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 um his entourage that came with it. Which the Egyptians worship Pharaoh as God in the flesh. When you do the research on Egypt, on the Egyptians, they worship not only Pharaoh, his son, his wife, anybody that was part of Pharaoh's household, as far as being of Pharaoh's sea line, was considered to be a god in the eyes of the Egyptians. Even going down to his priests, they were considered to be gods. So when the Lord brought judgment, when, it's, when you read the scripture, it speaks about God bringing judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. That's referring to all the judges and rulers of the hierarchy of Egypt, meaning they were not spared neither. Okay, that's what it's talking about. Give me um St. John chapter 1, verse 18. St. John. Like I said, you can read the whole St. John's the first chapter in itself, and with this video through the spirit, you should get the understanding of the relation between God and Christ with the word. But let's let's pull out a, a, a verse from St. John's the first chapter. Read um St. John um chapter 1, verse 18. No man had seen God at any time, the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the father he had declared that's right so when you get to understanding no man have seen god at any time so in the volume in the volume two video that i'm gonna do i'm gonna show you that the god of the old testament that the prophets saw and witnessed was referring to christ all right but those are the people that don't believe in christ in the old testament they don't get to understand it. when god manifests himself in a bush okay when moses received the ten commandments moses received them from christ you understand that? No man have seen the Heavenly Father. All right? When you go into Daniel 7 chapter, Daniel saw his hair, but he didn't see his face. Okay? No man can see the Lord's face and live. All right? So we get to understanding. Um, I believe there's a scripture that I see that um, the Most High, when he spoke to Moses directly, right. 
he sold him his backside or something of that nature.